Hi guys, this is gsno.com and I'm here with a very unusual unboxing. It's a triplet, so we got the Galaxy A54 5G, A34 5G and the A14. We got them in beautiful colors like this Lila for the A34 and also this beautiful Lime for the A54. Uh, we considered doing an unboxing for each of them, but we found out that uh, the accessories are pretty much the same, which means there aren't many. So, taking them from the right to the left, the A54 is a $500 phone, the A34 is a $400 phone, and the A14 is a $200 to $250 phone. All of them has the same, have the same accessories, a uh, key is to access the slots, and luckily we have microSD. Now, in the box we have the cable from USB-C to USB-C, and also the manual, and that's about it. We don't get a charger, so you should probably remember that. I've been actually playing with them for the past couple of days. And they have some things in common, two of them have Mediatek processors, two of them have AMOLED screens, and all of them have high refresh rates. The A14 90Hz, the other two 120Hz. So there's that. Large batteries all around, 5000mAh, and also Android 13 with the experience of uh, Core UI here. It's uh, actually One UI Core 5 here. Okay, so to keep things simple, I'm going to take them one by one and reveal them to you as we progress through this video. Okay, so first things first, the best spec of them all, Galaxy A54 5G. The screen is pretty bright, I'll give you that much, and I've also tested the battery, the battery on all three phones, and I was reasonably impressed. You may expect the handset to be made of glass or metal, well, it's actually plastic, uh, plastic all around, so yeah. This feels like the most premium of, premium of them all, it has a pretty nice build. I would have preferred the flat frame to increase the grip, but somehow the rounded frame looks a bit more elegant. It's also matte, not glossy. It's got IP67 certification and it weighs a bit above 200 grams. It also has pretty large bezels for the screen up front, just like I've seen on previous Galaxy A devices. Now, believe it or not, the screen isn't that big considering the size of the device, 6.4 inches Super AMOLED, bright and uh, Gorilla Glass 5 protected, Full HD Plus resolution and 120Hz refresh rate, useful for gamers. There's HDR10+, and the processor available here, uh, it's of the Exynos variety, this is actually the only Exynos based phone out of the triplet. Somehow, Samsung got cozy with the guys of Mediatek. So, this one here is actually a new CPU, the Exynos 1380, 5 nanometer processor, and uh, accompanied by 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. We have here the version with 8, luckily enough, 120 gigabytes of storage, there's also a version with double, and we also have a micro SD card slot. Um, the battery is a 5000 mAh unit, which charges at 25 watts, and we have an in-display fingerprint scanner around here to properly unlock the device safely, it's of the optical variety. There are There is a stereo speaker set up here, there is a speaker at the bottom, then the one at the top is in the earpiece, actually very well hidden, so well I actually can't see it. Okay, there is no audio jack as you may have noticed, it's only available on the A14. You'll actually find it hard to believe that the device doesn't have glass at the back and metal for the frame, it's very well built. That's one of my impressions. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, this device will provide you with Bluetooth 5.3, GPS, Wi-Fi 6, which is pretty fast, and a USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom side. Now, on the camera front, we have things to talk about. The selfie camera is a 32 megapixel shooter, just like we had on the previous few predecessors. Quite a few of them, three or four actually. Now, um, the selfie 32 megapixel camera is 4K video capable, and if you go to the back side, you'll see that there's a new approach. The new camera design, present on the Galaxy S23, is also present here. The camera includes a 50 megapixel sensor with OIS, 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and a 5 megapixel macro cam. Be advised, the Galaxy A53 before it had a 64 megapixel, 12 megapixel, 5 and 5 for macro and bokeh. So we seem to have lost the bokeh camera, which is now being replaced by, well, software to take portrait shots. And uh, I have to say that the public perception is that Samsung has been taking a step back from the cameras it had on the Galaxy A52 series. There were four of them, they were quite solid, even the macro ones. Anyway, we have quite a few options here. We have a pro mode, pro video, single take, night, food, panorama, macro, super slow-mo, slow motion and hyperlapse. Considering we're lacking a bokeh camera, we're also lacking those special effects from the Galaxy S series. But we do have a fun mode which is applied to your face with cute masks 
when the internet is connected. I'll actually indulge you with a few right now. Okay, so masks will be applied in real time. So that's the fun mode, that's what it's all about. Okay, so this is pretty much it as far as the device is concerned. And if you want to talk about the software, it's running on, um, uh, let's see here, Android 13 and also One UI 5.1. It keeps the famous edge bar. It also gets those cool widgets, which can be stacked. We also have device care and the better organization of connected devices and the security and privacy area. The best built of them all, I have to say, possibly the best looking of them all and believe it or not the most compact out of this triplet. I can see it good enough for some minor gaming, video consumption and vlogging on account of the 4K capable front camera. However, I still don't feel that huge of a jump from back in the day of the Galaxy A52s. Okay, we're done with this one. Time to move for further. Okay, so this is actually a pretty beautiful color itself. It's a lilac. This is the Galaxy A34. It's got IP67 certification and just like the previous model, plastic back, plastic frame. It's also pretty well built, but somehow I feel it's quite comfy in my hand. And we have a bright screen here, but I totally dislike that we have big bezels and also this ugly teardrop notch. Anyway, uh, we're dealing with a larger diagonal here, 6.6 .6 inches, although you wouldn't tell looking at the device. One quick mention, I have to say that it's longer than the Galaxy, uh, excuse me, it's longer than the Galaxy S23 Plus by a few millimeters. It also weighs 199 grams, but I feel they're better distributed than the ones, than the grams of the previously shown model, the Galaxy A54. Okay, so this A34, let's see what it has to offer. I mean, pretty okay grip, the same matte frame. The back is also matte. Uh, Samsung isn't doing glossy anymore. Well, except for the lime version from before um, aside from that i would say that um, while well, the previous model had the uh, exynos cpu this one has a dimensity cpu but first let's start with the screen so the screen we have here is a 6.6 .6 inch this time super amoled so larger full hd plus 120 hertz still gorilla glass 5 protection once again big bezels but not as big as you'd expect on a non-mainstream galaxy series so the a30 series is lesser the Galaxy A5 series. Let's talk about the CPU now. Uh, we should have an app for that. So it appears things are getting pretty tight between Samsung and MediaTek for some reason, even though as the time passed, they haven't used many of their chips. They actually preferred at some point even Unisoc on a tablet. So we have here the Dimensity 1080, which is a pretty solid CPU. I've seen it in action on other devices. Six nanometers. It's accompanied by six or eight gigs of RAM here, six and 120 gigabytes of storage plus micro SD. The battery is a, as usual already, uh, 5000 milliamp per hour unit, which should be good enough for your daily tasks. And it charges at 25 watts. So not many differences between this one and that one. Uh, it also has stereo speakers and no audio jack. Once again, the slit is very well hidden. I can't actually see it. And that's a big plus. One quick spoiler I can give you. This is the continuous battery life we achieved in PC Mark, which is quite solid, 13 hours similar to what we achieved on Galaxy A54, by the way. Connectivity-wise, we are treated to Wi-Fi, dual band, Bluetooth 5.3, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo BDS, and USB-C 2.0. Now, in this uh, teardrop notch at the top side sits a 13 megapixel camera, which if you look at the predecessor, well, it's pretty much the same. The Galaxy A33 had a 13 megapixel camera as well. The back side, let's see if there are any changes here. The design without a dedicated module is implemented here as well. If I remember correctly, I think that the Galaxy A30 series pioneered it before the Galaxy S23. Anyway, 40 megapixel OIS, 8 megapixel ultrawide, 5 megapixel macro. Now, the predecessor, the A33, had 40 megapixel, 8 megapixel, 5 and 2 for macro and bokeh. Once again, the bokeh camera was left out and we're only achieving simulated bokeh via software. I think we have enough options here, camera-wise, and uh, I should probably check out the rate of filming. But from what I know, you should get 4K, which is pretty impressive. 4K for the selfie and back camera. So Pro and Pro Video are here. Basically, all the options we saw on the previous model are also here, including, as you can see, 4K to difference per second capture. And also stabilization here, super steady mode is available. 
And a portrait shot, once again, with no effects, we don't have a dedicated bokeh camera. Just for a quick check and curiosity, we do have 4K for the front camera, but we also have the fun mode where you can play with various effects. Okay, so that's about it as far as this phone is concerned. Considering it's larger diagonal, I see it uh, good enough for some video watching maybe. And believe it or not, gaming even, uh, you should not underestimate this CPU. I honestly consider it better than the one from the Galaxy A54, even though that's a controversial stance. So some gaming and also uh, video watching. And of course, why not some vlogging on account of the 4K capable phone camera. Okay, this one is also done. And here comes the cheap one, the affordable one, the one for everybody, the $250 phone. A pretty strange texture of the backside. Uh, what's the name of the object you use to trim down your nails? File or what is it? Anyway, it's that sort of texture, linear, a bit annoying. Anyway, plastic again. This one feels like a cheaper build. You're going to feel that instantly. The edges are so big that they actually remind me of a, you know, robust phone. One of those rugged phones out there. It actually looks like a rugged phone, even though it's not very rugged. Okay, so uh, once we get talking about it, I should probably mention that the special thing about it is that it's a cheap phone with 5G. That's the core. And a cheap phone with 5G will sell well for older people, retired people who want to make voice calls or video calls with their nephews. Now, having said that, uh, let's talk about what we have here. So plastic build, once again, and it's so large, it's actually 4 millimeter longer than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's a very long phone. And uh, going further than that, I have to say that uh, it's not heavy because the length means that the weight is better distributed. The screen you're seeing here is just like the previous model, a 6.6 .6 inch. However, it's a PLS LCD, even though the application IDA calls it actually a TFT, which is not exactly a compliment. You can see it here, PLS TFT, so it's of the lesser variety and of course it's not very bright. 6.6 uh, inch Full HD Plus 90Hz refresh rate and this is the CPU MediaTek Dimensity 700. In some countries it's sold actually with Exynos 1330. Now this CPU here has been seen before by us on the Poco M3 Pro 5G and the Realme 8 5G. And also the Galaxy A22 5G, so we're no strangers to it, so yeah. Uh, it's a 7 nanometer chip, while the other Exynos was a 5 nanometer chip. I'm feeling a bit of discrimination here. So we also have uh, four gigs of RAM. There are version with six or eight. And we also have 120 gigabytes of storage plus micro SD, which is good news. The uh, stereo speakers are gone. We only have one, but we do get the audio jack back for some reason. Um, the battery is just as usual, just as we mentioned before for the other phones, 5,000 milliamp per hour, but the charging drops from 25 watts to 15. And check out the battery life on this phone. An amazing 20 hours and 25 minutes in the PC Mark continuous test, and I'm pretty blown away by that. So I'll sustain it again. It's a video call phone for the elderly and a movie watching phone indoors because outdoors you cannot take the sun. Okay, so on the connectivity front, it's got the whole Wi-Fi dual band thing. It's got Bluetooth 5.2, GPS, NFC, and then USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom. The front camera here is a 13 megapixel shooter, a welcome upgrade from the A13 which had a 5 megapixel shooter. That's why I keep banking on that video call thing. The backside shows the famous design Sans module. 50 megapixel main camera, well received. You can actually ignore the other two. There are two 2 megapixel cameras, one macro, one bokeh. Yes, we actually do have bokeh this time, but we don't have ultra wide. So yeah, of course, no 4K. We're stuck with the full HD filming and I'm actually curious to see if portrait brings the effects. Well, it actually doesn't because yeah, that's more of a Galaxy S thing. So these are the options available here. Pro, just for photos. Macro, panorama, night, food and slow motion plus hyperlapse. You saw a quick sample of lag before. Yes, lag does appear on this model. It also appears on the Galaxy A54, believe it or not, but less so on the Galaxy A34, which has got to be my favorite uh, among these three. Okay, so this experience is actually pretty interesting on account of it's not the typical One UI. So this is actually um, a special version of One UI applied on Android 13. It's One UI core version. So basically they left out some features to actually get it to run on this entry level handset. So for example, let's look at the widgets. Uh, they look a bit last gen compared to the ones on the proper Galaxy S devices on the Galaxy A 
They don't look as complex and I'm curious to see if we can stack them or not. We have to discover that, but so far so good. This is the best one battery wise, while the Galaxy A34 seems the best one gaming wise and the Galaxy A54 seems the best one all round wise. What's clear is that we can do vlogging with these two on account of the 4K capable front cameras. All of them have pretty solid batteries, none of them have chargers in the box. So if you're tight on a budget and if you're an older person who wants video calls, this is for you. If you want gaming and video watching, this is for you. If you want an all-rounder and a more premium build, this is Galaxy A54 for you. So in the end you're going to pick, but honestly, I would pick this one out of the lineup. We'll be back with more soon, this is it from gsnon.com. Hope you enjoyed this video, goodbye.